In this video, we're going to look at how we direct blood flow to different parts of the body. Different areas are going to have different requirements at different times. So for example, if you're exercising, then your skeletal muscles are going to need more blood flow to get more oxygen and nutrients to make energy. Whereas if you're resting and digesting, then your digestive system is going to need more blood flow. So we'll look at our overall blood pressure and then we're going to look at pressure and flow in various tissues. First, let's have a look at this chart that is showing the changes in pressure in different blood vessels. Remember that when we have systole, we have contraction. So the ventricles are contracting and pushing blood from the right ventricle to the pulmonary circulation and from the left ventricle out to the aorta and then to various arteries that will then branch to different parts of the body. Whereas diastole is the relaxation phase when the ventricles are filling. So the pressure in the ventricles during systole versus diastole is going to be dramatically different, right? So down here, if we look at the pressure in the left ventricle, it ranges from zero when it's relaxing to about 120 during contraction. Now this is when we are resting. This is not during a stress response or exercise. So this is a resting pressure difference. Now when the ventricle pumps the blood to the arteries, the large arteries have a pulse. And so we can see that during the systolic pressure, it is about 120 and the diastolic pressure is about 80. When we are measuring our general overall body blood pressure, we are looking at the pressure in our arteries and we generally use a blood pressure cuff around our arm and we will look at the blood pressure in the brachial artery. So this blood pressure cuff machine is called a sphygmomanometer and it will, when you wrap it around your arm and you increase the pressure and inflate the cuff, and as you increase the pressure in the cuff, that is going to squeeze off the brachial artery and that will decrease the flow. So we increase the pressure above the normal blood pressure and then release the pressure in the cuff. And then at some point, the pressure in the artery is going to be higher and you will start to hear a tapping sound. And this is the systolic blood pressure. We continue to release the pressure in the cuff and the tapping sound will stop when it reaches the diastolic pressure. The diastolic pressure is when the heart is not contracting. So a normal resting blood pressure is somewhere around 120 over 80. And then as the blood is flowing from the arteries into the arterioles, you can see there is quite a significant drop in pressure once the blood reaches the arterioles. I want to focus on what is happening in the arterioles today and how different arterioles can reroute blood to different tissues. Okay, so the arterioles play a very significant role in regulating pressure in different tissues. The capillaries, this is where we have our exchange, and then the pressure is even the lowest in veins and venules, and then it will go back to the heart. So blood always has to flow towards lower and lower pressure. So blood pressure is the amount of force exerted on the walls of the blood vessels. The two main factors that affect the pressure in your blood vessels is going to be your blood volume, and the, the resistance in those blood vessels. So if you had an increase in blood volume, let's suppose you drank a whole bunch of water and then you didn't pee, okay? When you increase your blood volume, what is going to happen to your blood pressure, your overall blood pressure? Okay, it is going to increase. So the kidneys play a very significant role in regulating our overall blood pressure because the kidneys will excrete excess water and ions. Okay, so the kidneys are very important for regulating blood pressure. The other thing is what is going to affect the vascular resistance? So if the resistance increases, what happens to your overall blood pressure? If you increase the resistance, you're going to increase the pressure. Now, how do we affect the resistance of our blood vessels? 
Okay, the resistance is primarily affected by the diameter of the blood vessel. So if the blood vessel dilates, what is that doing to the resistance? Okay, that is decreasing the resistance. What happens if you constrict the blood vessel? That is going to increase the resistance, right? Because now there's less space for that blood to flow through. So if we had overall vasoconstriction, we would increase our overall blood pressure. Okay, so when we are exercising, for example, we need to increase our blood pressure because we need more cardiac output and we need more blood flowing to the muscles. So your overall vascular resistance is going to increase when you're exercising. Your overall blood pressure is going to increase. So if a normal resting blood pressure is about 120 over 80 in healthy people, when you are exercising, that systolic pressure can go up anywhere to 160 up to 220 millimeters of mercury of pressure. And the diastolic pressure can go anywhere up to about 100 millimeters of mercury of pressure. And that is a normal healthy range. Any systolic over 230 is considered dangerous. So now let's just look at a few factors, okay? So we know blood volume and vascular resistance play the most significant role in our overall blood pressure. So what would happen in these scenarios? Okay, number one, we just talked about exercise. During exercise, what happens to your overall blood pressure? Will it go up or down? Okay, up. What would happen if you had atherosclerosis, which is when you have plaque buildup in the arteries? If you fill the arteries with plaque, that is like making the diameter smaller, okay? So that is like increasing the resistance, okay? Which is going to increase your overall blood pressure, right? So that's why people that have heart disease tend to have high blood pressure. Now, what would happen if somebody took a medication that was a diuretic? A diuretic is a medication that makes you excrete more water and ions through your kidneys, okay? It makes you pee more. So what's gonna to happen to your overall blood pressure if you excrete more water and ions and basically decrease your blood volume? Okay, that will decrease your blood pressure, right? So people that have high blood pressure sometimes take diuretic medications. What about a medication that dilates the blood vessels? So if somebody was taking a vasodilator, like say nitroglycerin, and all of the blood vessels in the body dilated, what does that do to the blood pressure? Okay, that is decreasing the resistance and that is going to decrease the overall blood pressure. Now, what about if somebody sat in a sauna? When you sit in a sauna, that is going to dilate your blood vessels and decrease vascular resistance and it will decrease your blood pressure. So what do you think would happen to someone that was taking a vasodilator or a diuretic medication to lower their blood pressure and then they sat in a sauna as well, right? It could be a bad situation, right? Because then blood pressure can be lowered too much. So it's dangerous for someone taking blood pressure medication to also use a sauna. Now I want to look at how do we reroute blood to different parts of the body? Now, it's going to seem a little bit confusing because I want to talk about pressure and flow, the amount of blood and the pressure on the vessels and the resistance in specific body tissues. Okay, so now we're not talking about the whole body. So when I talk about constricting a blood vessel now, I'm not talking about constricting all of your blood vessels. I'm talking about constricting an arterial to a specific tissue. Okay, it's a little bit different because our blood vessels are not garden hoses. Let's first look at a scenario. Let's suppose this is a garden hose. Okay, you turn on the garden hose. The water flowing through the hose is the flow. The pressure exerted on the garden hose, that's the pressure, the blood pressure or the hydrostatic pressure. What happens when you have this garden hose and then you pinch off the end with your thumb and basically decrease the diameter of the garden hose. What happens to the water? Does the pressure coming out of the hose, does that pressure increase or decrease if you make the diameter smaller? 
Okay, the pressure increases, right? That's when you can spray the garden hose really far. And so when you have one single vessel and you pinch off part of it, the, the water all still has to come out of that same opening. So when you close off that opening a little bit, you're increasing the pressure and it's going to make that water spray. But our blood vessels are not garden hoses. Okay, so I want to look at this blood vessel um, network and I want you to think about what's going to happen if we constrict one of the vessels. So here we have a blood vessel carrying blood. Let's suppose this is your brachial artery and then it's going to branch into different arterioles bringing blood to different parts of your arm. Now, because our blood vessels are branched they are not garden hoses. What would happen if we constricted this blood vessel? Now we have a constriction. Vasoconstriction is going to occur here. What is going to happen to the blood flow to this tissue compared to the blood flow going over to this tissue? If this was a garden hose, the pressure would increase, right? But this is branching. So when you constrict this blood vessel, this pressure in this tissue is not going to increase. The pressure and the flow is going to decrease because the blood that is coming from this direction is now going to be rerouted to this direction. So that would be the same effect as if we dilated this blood vessel. If we dilate this blood vessel, and this is going to say your arm muscles, what is going to happen to the blood flow in this tissue if you dilate this vessel? You're going to increase the blood flow and you're going to increase the blood pressure because there's more blood flow. When there's more blood volume, there's going to be more blood pressure. The formula that we can use is that the flow or the volume of blood is always proportional to the pressure. If we increase the flow, we will increase the pressure because more volume means more pressure. And if we increase the pressure, then we're going to increase the flow because then there will be more volume. So they are always proportional to each other and they are always inversely proportional to the resistance. So if we're going to increase the flow and the pressure, that means we have to decrease the resistance. So in our blood vessel A over here, we decreased the resistance because we dilated the blood vessel. Whereas over here in our blood vessel B, we constricted this vessel. So the flow is going to be decreased. That's proportional to the pressure, which is decreased. And because we constricted the vessel, we have increased the resistance. So when we are looking at a specific tissue, if we want more blood flow to go to our leg muscles when we're running, we need to dilate the blood vessels in our leg muscles and then they will, there will be less blood flow somewhere else like your digestive tract. So when you're exercising, it's harder to digest food because your blood is going to your legs and not your intestines. Okay, so let's just go through a couple of practice things. Okay, what is going to happen to the blood flow in a specific tissue if you constrict the blood vessels? Will the flow increase or decrease? Okay, it will decrease. If you constrict vessels, it will decrease. What happens to the resistance in a blood vessel if you dilate it? Okay, vasodilation decreases resistance. What will happen to the blood flow if you increase the pressure? Then the flow will increase. Okay, so pressure and flow are always directly proportional. If one goes up, the other goes up. And they are inversely proportional to the resistance. So if the resistance increases, flow and pressure decrease. If the resistance decreases, flow and pressure increase. So what would happen in your digestive tract if you're having a stress response? 
Okay, so when you're having a stress response, your body wants to send blood to your heart and your lungs and to your muscles, okay? Not to your digestive tract. So remember your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is stress, parasympathetic is rest and digest. So when you are having a stress response, how are you going to feel if you try to digest food, right? Eating when you're stressed or running around is not going to help you digest food. So lastly, I just wanna go through some of the most important things that affect blood flow, either to a specific tissue or your overall blood pressure. Blood flow is going to change depending on the metabolic requirements. So any of your tissues that need more oxygen or nutrients, they will get more blood flow. Your body temperature plays a role. So if we increase the temperature, we are going to have peripheral vasodilation. Remember that our body temperature always wants to be about 37 degrees. So when we get warm, we need to increase peripheral blood flow to try to get rid of excess heat. Whereas when we're cold, we are going to constrict peripheral blood vessels because we want to try to keep the heat inside of our body. Blood volume, when we increase our total blood volume by drinking a whole bunch of water or eating salty food, we will increase blood pressure. Increasing blood volume will increase your overall blood pressure. Blood viscosity also plays a role and that's primarily about your hematocrit level, which is your number of red blood cells. So people that are anemic and have low red blood cells can have low blood pressure. And then vascular resistance is about the blood vessel diameter, so how much it's constricting or dilating, but also about vascular compliance. How stretchy are your blood vessels? And this is related to your cardiovascular health. Healthier cardiovascular systems have more compliance. The main things that are going to decrease the compliance, if you decrease the compliance, you're going to increase your blood pressure. Okay, this can happen with cardiovascular disease or atherosclerosis when you build up plaque. It will also happen if you increase blood glucose level. Um, people that are diabetic have more rigid blood vessels and higher risk of high blood pressure.